individual defense. Who's your best defender here? So you're out here, all right. Been getting a little so. I just want to show something. The difference in my mind between passing a serve, serve reception, and digging is in digging, you've got to identify the zone you're in and the spot you're in. If you don't, you're not going to dig a lot of balls. So it's, ha it's happening before the ball is hit. But Alexa, get down low. So one thing, you, she's going to come up to the ball. So she doesn't want to go down with the ball. She's going to exactly come up. Yeah. Ready. Very good. Ready. All right, now, notice. Go, be right back. Ready? She's got to read where the ball is before she's going to play defense. And I want, at least the way I teach defense, I want you to be able to dig a ball that's right in that vicinity. So Alexa, ready? So anywhere, even this ball, hey, she's going to get. That ball, she's going to get. That ball, she's going to get. That ball, she's going to get. All right? And that's more of a pass than it is a defensive play. But if I'm hitting the ball hard and it's right at her, hey, she's got a chance to play coming up for the ball on defense. Now, last thing I want to say, we'll get the coaches to talk. Sprawling, rolling, diving, those are all great, but you're not getting an eight, nine, 10 judgment on how good the roll and sprawl is. Get the ball and be unafraid to hit the floor. Then, hey, can I dig the ball? Michael, defense. Uh, the biggest thing in defense for us that I emphasize is definitely like a lot of skills in block balls, less is more. And I think we do a little bit of disservice to our teams when we want them to start in one area and have them shift into another. And you have this big rotation or whatever it may be, or line drops, all these huge moves. And I think what we're building in is we're building in a lot of people moving while the ball is being hit. So first and foremost, most important, I want all players' feet stopped eyes on the attacker prior to the swing, best case scenario. So I'd rather have you there out of position than in position or trying to get to position and still moving, all right? Um, some of the feedback we give is hands neutral, away from the body. I think it's important to be able to respond. So when Alexa loads up, it's able to respond to anything that's hit low up here, up near her head. I want both, all of our players playing really well, both with our platform and with our hands. And so we want to make sure that as we do that, we prepare. I think it's really important for, for you to coach what they're looking at because what they're looking at is actually going to tell them what to do across the net. So make sure that not only you to coach the technique of how you want them to dig, but make sure you're, you're giving feedback as to what they're looking at because that's the information that's going to tell them what to do. Um, aside from just going for balls and hustle, those are all things, I think it's more valuable to spend more time digging on your feet and moving through balls on your feet and less time in terms of going through balls and going to the floor. Hey, does, there, does everybody understand that the concept that Michael is talking about, as soon as I'm like that, I'm dead. Keeping my feet on defense is critical. All really good people with foot movement, if they've played early games of soccer, tennis, where you have to move your feet, you gotta get your feet there. And you don't wanna hit the floor without at least touching the ball at the same time. Once my knee hits the floor, knee pads are bad for that with young kids because they think they can hit the floor now. Hey, take their knee pads off for a while. That doesn't work. Thumbtacks on the ground work really well. All right. John. Uh, I think that probably a lot of you here have better defensive teams than we do. If you're a coach that attitude is the most important thing, that you love your team to work hard, you want them to go for everything, and it's what you do every day, then you're probably better on defense than our teams are. I think attitude is first. I think vision is next. And those two things cause balance usually, especially vision causing balance. So I think what you can do to train attitude comes way before technical things, that it has to be contagious, it has to be what you want, and you have to do drills to bring it about. I think the more you ask them to move on defense, what Michael was talking about, 
If you ask them to go from here to here, the further they have to move, the less vision and balance they're going to have. I think there has to be movement on the court, but I think we have to remember there, there's a correlation there. If I can just stand and watch and see and be in a place, I'm going to be better at balance and be at, at better at seeing things. But if I have to move a lot, I don't. So we got to come up with systems that kind of add to that a little bit. So let's just see if we have two people that have a little attitude on defense. Two, two people are in. Let's go, quick. We need everybody else to help me, okay? Come on over here. Just try not to get in the way. Hand me the cast and somebody else hand me balls. You got the whole court here, okay? You got to get 10 balls up. Only I'll probably cut it short, but look out because this is crazy, okay? You ready? You have to touch 10 balls and they have to land inside the court. This is only attitude, right? Okay. Okay, how many do they have? Okay. Right here, here, get you. Go, go, go. Right here. You go, get it. Right here. 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 Right Alexa, did you play soccer when you were younger? <laughs> no, uh, I, I truly I agree with uh, what, what John said, other than that his team's pretty good defensively. At least some of the players were especially good because Terry talked about our consecutive winning streak. It started after they beat us and it ended when they beat us. So uh, the, both of those ends of that streak uh, had a Stanford uh, involvement. But, but I agree, let's just give me one player who's crazy. I want crazy. Because, because all this technique is great, but as John said, it's about attitude. So how, how do we play? There's no lines, okay? Okay, you only have to get three balls, which isn't so bad, all right? Except it's kind of a big area. So we'll go with this one to start with. Okay, good, okay. So, which takes us to rule one in my gym. If you don't go for a ball, you're out. Just take you out of the drill. All right, that's all. And I don't yell, and I don't do anything. If you don't go for the ball, you're out of the drill. I'll give her one more chance, because I'm a giver. All right? <laughs> I'm a giver, all right? I'm a giver. Let's go, Pete. Come on, Pete. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, that's really nice. <laughs> that's, uh, did you go for that ball? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we only need one more, right? Good. And that brings me to my last thing. One-handed pancakes, you're out. <laughs> Why? Because uh, I was a national referee, and I have to tell you as a referee, you can't tell if the ball's good or bad. So I'm not training my players to mess with the referees. And do, do I see some players doing it? Sure. Do I see them doing it in my gym? No. All right? So does that mean you have to do a pancake to win in college volleyball? Maybe, maybe you do. Uh, I don't think you do. Uh, I've seen players do it. I think it's great, but I don't see it in my gym. If they come in doing that skill, they don't do it very long. Because I think if you can get to the ball, you can get to the ball. When John was doing the one drill, the girl stopped and put her hand out. Stop's a good thing. Just, I want to stop the pain. The pain of receiving serve. I sub them out. Okay? That's how, that's how I look at uh, defense. Bam! <laughs>